I'm going to talk about reindeer cultures. Um, boom, boom. Let me see, we do like this. So, uh, the basics is I'm talking mainly on basis on, on uh, the event culture, but also Sami information and uh, literature studies. Um, and uh, some of the features uh, I can distinguish, I think, have got wider applications also for, for other cultures than, than reindeer cultures. Um, one focus would be a thing I think is very interesting. That's the internal variation of, of these cultures, which can be extreme. Um, another focus is on the force um, um, behind, behind this variation, which is uh, clearly, for a large part, uh, identity, the feeling of identity, uh, simply to be different. And the third focus will be the interaction between such cultures, including some territorial issues and uh, uh, changes of clan territory strategies for collecting information about foreign areas and, and things like that. But first, um, one culture consists of nu numerous clans with a whole spectrum of economic strategies and thus different settlement patterns each making their economic strategies, strategic decisions. They have a clan leader and um, at times switching from hunter gathering to pastoralism. Uh, earlier pastoralism wasn't that normal, but it looks as if you've also had some pastoralism earlier. Well, um, if you look at here four different cultures, in archaeology we tend to think that they are more or less internally homogeneous. Um, uh, and if we stand in the field looking at a reindeer culture, for my sake, uh, mainly the Evenk, we found out that they are bloody different. There is a number of clans and they vary um, with regard to material, culture, typology, with style, ritual, linguistic details, preferred food items even, um, et cetera, et cetera. And um, for instance, um, what I discovered with neighboring clans of, of uh, the Evenk uh, was that they carry out the bear ritual, all of them. Uh, the main essence is the same, but the uh, uh, way they do it and the physical uh, features that accompany it uh, is very different from clan to clan. Um, so uh, something is clearly going on. Also, with uh, regard to dialect, two neighboring clans often don't understand each other because they have got so different dialects. It's quite strange. Um, and even if you dive into the clans, you can see the different families. They can have different traditions, different ornaments, and so on. But the most significant differences you have between uh, the clans, probably because they're also the territorial units. Uh, so that's where you have the main identity. Um, it's a well-established uh, phenomena in the ethnography, social anthropology, um, that you have uh, such uh, variation. And uh, you can also see that it's actually dynamic over time. Um, in archaeology, we tend to more or less ignore that kind of dynamics, but um, uh, because it makes uh, archaeological interpretation difficult to handle. Um, that it is also difficult to observe in the archaeological record is that it is often bound to organic materials. You signalize uh, uh, your difference in ornament and so on, in bark, in fur, skin, and so on. But there is really a, a very, very fast exchange of patterns and traditions and styles going on, competition about being the smartest and so on. Um, second, he uses uh, the concept of isocratism for that. Um, meaning that some, some uh, kind of signaling, cultural signaling goes, uh, uh, is, is uh, uh, changes fast in, in materials that are, are often easy to, ha to manipulate. Um, it no doubt also plays a role that the main focus in archaeology is to distinguish cultures uh, more than cultural groups. But as I said, the central driver behind this is identity. Uh, and as I could press the event to uh, admit, um, 
they say everybody wants to be a little bit different. It creates an us and them at all scale levels of the society. Um, the only cultural feature I found was uniform through the event cultural area was the dwelling organization. And um, it's very difficult to understand why, but what they say when you ask them is, well, if you travel far and visit other event, you wouldn't like to make a fool of yourself by taking the wrong place when you get into a tent. And it's very difficult to understand that that's so important because um, the dialects can be different, everything else can be different, the material culture can be very different. So um, um, it's, well, it's interesting. Just a shot of old Larsa sitting in the men's half with a bit of the kitchen area in front. Um, and um, here, the female side seen from the door. Uh, when there is a lot of women, you can squeeze the pattern, but you have the, re the same relative pattern inside the tent, and you're very strict about it. Um, so, um, 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 uh, well, I have been through this, um, but it's simply, uh, the reason for this is that, that the most personal thing for a person in such a tent is his or her position because it signalizes his or her identity in its totality in one way or another. Uh, but in spite of all the cultural diversity, there is an internal common understanding also of a common identity within the culture. Uh, Evenk have to marry Evenk women. It can be very difficult because they have to be the same status so they may have to travel far. Uh, I often asked them when they were making complaints, why don't you marry a, a woman from the neighboring land, uh, village? They're not really bank. So they have to often travel thousands of kilometers to pick up a wife. And they still do it today. Well, something about interaction between the cultures. We know a little about it. Um, when it is practical, Evenk and other reindeer cultures, they can switch their language for practical reasons. In the Olinyak area, what happened when they met the Yakut who had switched to Evenk economy, reindeer economy and Evenk uh, cosmology, um, uh, the Evenk uh, switched their language to Yakut. So all the place names were translated into Yakut. Um, in areas where the Evenk do a lot of trading with other groups, they switch their language and uh, drop speaking of ink. Um, also, we have a quite good record of how the Yakut, they penetrated into the Evenk area through the uh, last centuries. And uh, from the stories they tell, it's quite obvious that they, they were fighting, uh, killing a lot of people. Um, and the event had a very strict rule. You never talk bad about anybody apart from Yakut. About Yakut, Yakuts, you can say anything. They're in your dreams as evil creatures. They jump out of lakes and pull you out of your boat and drown you, etc., etc. Um, except in some areas, as in the, the, the Olinyak Harilak uh, area, um, where there is about 50 50 Evenga Yakut. But uh, it's probably because these two groups more or less have culturally fused in that area. Um, I haven't been studying it, it in detail, but uh, that's a fact. You can see that's the red ones are the Yakuts, and uh, the one with dots are Evenks, and Eveni are the red ones. That, that's actually the same group. It was, it was separated by the Russian administrators. But you can see from the seventh uh, century, to the 18th century, to the 19th century, to 1959. That's Gorbachev's results on basis of the old uh, statistics recorded in, uh, in Russia. And uh, there you can see one culture penetrating into another culture's territory. Um, uh, so uh, that's one of the things that happen. Um, another thing, you can see tendencies of in Siberia, but where I have to jump to Australia, where Peter Sutton has been studying it, is that all the clans, all the groups, all the cultures, they try to get to the most productive areas. And in Australia, that has been 
uh, they try to get out to the coast. So where you find the more uh, rigid groups, that's in the inland, where you find the most dynamic groups with the most cultural diversity, most dialects and so on, that's on the coast. Peter Sutton, who made this, he had been working at the Cape York, where they talk, uh, in, in one group, they talk four different languages and uh, quite small territories, but extremely high dynamics. Um, if we look at, at uh, culture groups on the uh, map, um, the Manchu and the Evang and the Event, that's actually the same culture. Uh, the Chinese don't like to hear that, but that's a fact. Uh, then you have the area with the Samoyed uh, uh, groups and the Sami. Um, and uh, if you look at, at their uh, dwelling organization, which I think is a, a very central cultural feature, um, then they actually have quite similar, uh, but not identical, uh, types of dwelling organization. But characteristic is that it is uh, separated uh, alongside from the door inwards in the dwelling. And one side is important, the other is much less important. Um, I'm still collecting data on the Samoyed groups uh, because it's very diffuse what, what you have of information. Social anthropologists have not been that interested in, in precise information about dwelling information. But um, uh, they have quite closely related pattern, which actually, interesting enough, is also closely related to the late Mesolithic pattern you have uh, and uh, uh, hunter-gatherer Neolithic pattern you have from Finland. Um, uh, I'll show you. This is... Also, uh, this is the pattern from uh, Karmelati, I don't know if that was pronounced correct, in uh, Finland, where you have the wooden, the remains of a wooden building burnt down with a platform on one side and apparently with the female activity areas on the platform and the male sitting on the floor, which is similar to with what we have found in, in uh, the Danish late Mesolithic uh, dwellings, which is in a way opposite of the event because there you have um, you have the man sitting on, on the sleeping place or the platform. It can be a platform in some cases. Um, but again, it's interesting because if your similarities with regard to dwelling organization are that large, we're talking about larger cultural areas. Um, and if you look at the Maglemosa pattern, the diagonal uh, Maglemosa pattern, it also has got a, a, a quite large distribution and probably even larger than this. So uh, depending on what we, what we look at, uh, uh, lithic typology or dwelling organization or whatever, um, there are different possibilities for, for, uh, for uh, defining uh, cultural areas. <laughs> Thanks, that was just... <laughs>